Hey guys, how are you? Thank you for taking the time to uh, share this experience with me and let me show you my experience with the Illuminas Distal Radius uh, system. Uh, I'll quickly go through the slides because I want this to be a hands-on experience for everybody. And I just want to thank my team here. I have Michael Thielen, my physician assistant, Daryl Counts, one of my surgical techs, and Kevin Faber, our local um, rep for Illuminas. And we are very lucky to have Dr. Harris Gelman also joining us, uh, one of my colleagues in Fort Lauderdale, who actually did his fellowship at the same place at uh, USC out in Los Angeles. I think he did it just a couple of years before me, but we won't say how much before me. I think he, I think he trained my mentors. So <laughs> anyway, I'll give you a quick synopsis. Uh, I practice in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We have a multi-specialty orthopedic practice here and I'm their hand surgeon. Um, we have three offices in three separate suburbs of uh, Western Fort Lauderdale. Most of our population, about 80% are between the ages of 10 and 60. And uh, we see a quite amount of volume per visit per day and surgeries per month. And uh, most of our cases are performed, 90% of them in an outpatient surgery center. So I wanna be really specific about the patient population we're targeting. Okay, when we're treating distal radiuses and doing an ORIF, this is not a one-size-fits-all type of thing. This is specifically geared toward the geriatric population. Um, our targeted age group is over the age of 60. It's mostly for extra-articular fractures um, with some intra-articular fractures, and I'll be more specific when we go along. And as you know, in the geriatric population, we often find... Um, some obstacles with regards to poor skin elasticity, comorbidities, and um, we'll go over some of our obstacles. And just now we welcome Dr. Cardoso, who is another colleague of mine who's joined uh, us for the, this training here. And he also practices in Miami and Fort Lauderdale. All right, so what are some of the obstacles that we've all faced and we've been there, right? Um, with this elderly population, we have to focus on quality of life. You know, um, 60, 70, 80 year olds are much more active they are today than they were 10, 20 years ago. A lot of them live alone, so it's, they don't want to be immobilized in a cast. We often have skin issues um, with skin breakdown, and also we have to delay, uh, delay um, physical therapy due to immobilization. So we have to try to do everything to get these patients back to doing what they want to do and their normal activities as, as soon as possible. So why, why don't we just bowler plate? We all know the answer. We've been there. It's more traumatic. It's increased OR time. Often these patients have poor bone quality and we have to bone graft them. We all, always deal or often deal with wound breakdown and, and increased post-operative pain. And just some of the articles that we've highlighted that you guys can look at yourself just shows, just kind of um, quantifies how many distal radiuses are, are um, occurring in the US in this patient population and how many patients now live independently compared to 20 years ago. So why use Illuminas, right? It's less traumatic. It's a smaller incision. Um, it's a shorter time to recovery and, and an increase, uh, a shorter time to physical therapy and a quicker return to daily activities of life. All right, so I'm gonna share some quick cases with you. Um, one of my patients, this is the perfect patient. She's a 65 year old active female who likes to play tennis and lives alone. And here she had a very, pretty simple extra articular fracture. These are the post-operative x-rays. Here's another similar extra articular in a 75 year old active patient. 
These are the pre-ops, and as you can see in the post-ops, we get great radial height, inclination, and a nice neutral tilt on lateral views. So this is my first and favorite patient. Uh, she's a 74-year-old female who uh, had a fall. Uh, I was on call at the emergency room, and uh, she's a female with multiple comorbidities and she was on a blood thinner with an INR of 2.5, and she came in with a radius and ulna fracture. You guys have seen this. You've had to tackle this issue. You know, what are our options? We can't, we can't just cast her and let her heal the way, you know, it is in this situation. You know that it's going to be hard to polar plate this. We could put several K wires and then immobilize her for six to eight weeks. Um, but using Illuminos, you'll see how this patient really recovered and got back to normal ASAP. So this is her ORIF of the radius and ulna. She was discharged on post-operative day one. This is a month out. You can see we still have maintained our reduction. And this is her a month out. You could barely see her incisions. I'm trying to show you on this picture her incision in the radial styloid and ulnar styloid, which you can't even see. And you could see her range of motion, and she drove herself to, to the office herself. And you could just imagine right now, four weeks out, um, she would be in a cast for, for another two to two to four weeks. So she was beyond ecstatic about the results. And you guys will see for yourself, these are the results that you guys would get in this patient population. So this is truly a game changer, user friendly, it's cost effective when you compare it to bowler plating. And it's both excellent for us, it makes our life easier and makes the, the patient's life even easier. So let's do the hands on. All right, so let me show you guys this picture. This fracture is a little bit more proximal than we wanted to, so I'll probably Michael my feet on this one. Dr. Gelman and Cardoso are already on autograph, so I'm just going to have to do a little patient. And these are your lateral. All right, now can we get a 15 blade? So if you make a stab incision over the radial styloid process over here, like that, phenomenon, you guys can dissect down and make sure the sensory branch of the radial nerve is not getting dinged on this one. Okay. The next step is you just take a straight all to Disrupt the cortex of the radial styloid. So let's see where we are. Let's see on the lateral. And she girls who's got the bone. So once you get into the medullary canal, take a curve, cannulate it all, and you're set. Wow.
Sometimes it takes a little fidgeting to get this guide wire down. Because it hits the hole where it wants to work at. So let's see where we are. Sometimes you have to finagle this and try to get it past the practice set. So in a fraud live station, this is pretty simple and straightforward. Just like in a live patient, the arrow always sets me straight. So once you get your guide wire down, take your all out. Now it depends on the patient's bone quality. Sometimes you don't have to use a reamer, but if you have good bone quality, this is a four five, this will start. And then you can go all the way to six five. There's an interval of a, there's a five five reamer also. Once you, you bring the canal, you can take your peel away sheet. Take your sheep out with your guide wire. And the next is the actual balloon that has the polymer inside that we're going to inflate and fill up that pendularium. So you can see the balloon catheter has these markings and you want to get that most distal marking as close to the radial styloid as you can. And the great thing about this is, is that once you're ready, you can actually do your reduction. Second, catheter pull away the sheath to make sure the catheter, always check to make sure the catheter has 
All right, and the great thing about this is, is that you can do your reduction and hold it while, while your assistant now inflates the balloon. So you don't have to get so fixated on your reduction. Now the polymer goes in very slowly, so you just need a steady push. And you can actually see the balloon expanding in the canal. Once you feel resistance and you can see that proximally the canal is pretty filled, right? You can have your assistant close the top stop right there. And then you have your reduction. So then you can play with it, <laughs> check the lateral. See that lines up pretty nicely. Okay. And this is my favorite part of the whole thing. You Turn down the lights, you hand off the light source to your rep, and depending on the length of your implant, there's already a program pre-programmed chip that will count down how many seconds you need. And you just wait for the curing process. And a lot of times with more displaced fractures, even though the balloon's inflated, you still have a little wiggle room, so you could do your reduction and kind of stabilize it and hold it while the polymer hardens next to yours. And uh, you, you'll see that actually the cure time can take longer than your actual process. So we're count, counting down about six, Six minutes. <laughs>